All right, today we're talking about medieval music. Uh, medieval music is ancient music um, in relation to our modern day. So we're looking at back when uh, King Arthur was around. Um, so during this period, Columbus has not yet discovered America. European feudalism is at its height, which means like kings and queens and princes and lords and peasants. And religion, particularly the Catholic Church, is very important both politically and in people's personal lives. So this blank is personal lives. Number four, uh, what did people do for fun? They participated in jousting tournaments, feasts, and played and listened to music. So let's go back to number three really quick. Um, religion is really important because a lot of people at this time were uneducated. Education was not available. Um, they may, some of them never went to school. Actually, a lot of them never went to school. And so they really believed um, that uh, everyone who had control over them, everyone who had power over them was put there for, you know, by God or um, whatever reason. And they believed that they were treated so badly because they were supposed to be a lot of times. Um, so it's not a great situation if you're not a king or a queen um, or a knight. If you're not living in the court of these kings and queens, then you had a really terrible life. Um, and a lot of this power was exerted by the church, um, and the church used that over kings and queens too. So they were in control of the kings and queens and the peasants and the lords and the knights because they had power over their religious life. Um, they could say that you weren't going to heaven unless you did this. Um, and a lot of times that meant going to war. Um, so kings and queens were still even controlled by the Catholic Church, and the leader of the Catholic Church is the Pope. So at the time, the Pope basically was in control of everything. Um, and because these peasants had such miserable lives, really the only things they could do were um, tournaments and feasts and listening and playing, um, listening to and playing music. Uh, now, books were not available because at the time, if you wanted to have something written down or uh, printed, like you wanted a book or something like that, it had to be written entirely by hand. So there were um, monks in the Catholic Church that devoted their entire lives to copying one book, like the Bible. Um, so it's a really hard time. Uh, we didn't have the printing press yet, so if you wanted anything, it had to be had to be uh, written by hand. So now let's go down to the second paragraph. Uh, medieval music began as simple chant, C H A N T chant. It was also called plain song, um, and over time, that music became more complicated. So originally, it was really plain, hence plain song and uh, it got more complicated. So chant was church music that was sung. It had only one melody and no particular rhythm, using only a few pitches. It was performed by monks who were Christian men that had taken vows of poverty and lived together in a monastery. Troubadours were kind of the opposite of monks. Um, monks over here on the right, troubadours on the left. Who looks like they're having a better time? Uh, troubadours were more like pop stars of the day. They were like the party goers, right? And they performed pop music or secular music. So let's look right here. Troubadours performed secular music or music that was for the people, similar to pop music today. They were professional musicians and they traveled around from place to place. Um, sometimes there was a troubadour that was employed at a court and they would stay there for a while. Um, but for the most part, they traveled a lot. Um, and they were responsible for setting tales and poems. This blank right here is poems to song. And a lot of times they set that to song to kind of pass them on because there were no books um, that was not available for everybody. So in order to tell stories and help remember it better, they set it to songs. They often played instruments like lute, flutes, or the hurdy-gurdy. And we're going to listen to all of those in just a minute. Um, let's go down here uh, to some of the common uh, medieval musical instruments. Okay, you can see we have the uh, sackbut. Yes, that is really its name. <laughs> and that was a, a hybrid wind or brass instrument. Um, it has a mouthpiece like a trumpet, but a body a bit like a recorder. 
um, in the way that it's played, but it actually looks a little bit more, uh, in, the, in the Renaissance period, it looked a little bit more like a trombone. Uh, flutes, they were uh, tradition, traditional wooden wind instruments, say that five times fast, much like our modern day recorder that maybe you played in elementary school. We had string instruments, the lute, the mandolin, the zither, and the dulcimer. Um, and then finally, um, just our, out of our examples, hurdy-gurdy is um, common from uh, a lot of our music history to even the 18th century, uh, 18th and 19th century. And we really don't know how it got its name, but we think that it comes from the old English world, word hurly-burly, which means to make a great noise. So it's really, really loud and kind of obnoxious. And it sounds a little bit like a cross between a bagpipe, think Scotland, and a fiddle. And um, we're going to listen to some of those right now, including some chant and some of these instruments. Okay, so here's a little bit of chant, see what you think of it. I want you to listen and see how many parts you hear. Um, are there different things happening or is it all kind of the same? Is it easy to understand? Okay, so they're singing in Latin, which is a dead language now, and nobody speaks it, no country, nothing. Um, but that was the language of the church, and it's still the language of the church today. Um, but a lot of people didn't know how to speak Latin, so they didn't really know what all that meant. Okay, so that was our church music. And now we're going to listen to some secular music, which is music that's like pop music for the time. So you're going to listen to somebody who's a modern day person performing it on um, an instrument that's similar to a medieval. Does this sound like your pop music? So he's singing a pop song. This is the equivalent of all the single ladies. And he's singing it about a cricket and how the cricket is a very good singer. So clearly pop music is not the same as it once was. Okay, so now we're going to listen to um, a couple things. We're going to listen to the sackbut. So you can tell it looks a little bit more like a trombone in the Renaissance period, but it did evolve over time. Okay. And now let's listen to the viol, which is as similar as we can get to our instruments. This is the viol de gamba, which means, de gamba means the legs, so it's the viol of the legs. Notice he's holding it in between his legs and he's playing it with a bow, but a little bit differently than we do. And he has a little bit of a funky different shape to it, okay? Okay, sorry, it's not going to let me listen to that one. Um, let's listen to the lute. The lute is uh, what he was playing for the cricket song. Um, and you notice it looks a little bit like a guitar, but slightly different. Okay, and the hurdy-gurdy, a great noise. So it's really, really loud, and you wind it around, and it just makes all sorts of great noise. Um, it's just a really loud instrument. Um, and then there's the sham, which is also really interesting. It looks a little bit like one of our modern-day wind uh, wind instruments, maybe like the oboe. It's 
got an interesting sound. Okay. All right. So we listened to a little bit of that. Very interesting. Very interesting. <laughs> uh, so now let's look down here. Why don't we know exactly how medieval music sounded? Well, there is a great deal of debate when it comes to knowing exactly how early medieval music was performed or how it sounded when people played it. One of the problems was that there was no real system for musical notation. This meant that music could not be written down and recorded accurately. Why did it matter? Well, if it wasn't written down well, music could only ta be taught by people who knew how to read so that blank is read, whatever notation was used to record the music, and this was not always easy. Historians have found e early musical notations that were developed by the church, which tells us that relig religious music was, at first, the only music that was important enough to be written down. Remember, paper and ink were very rare in those days. In order for, so for something to be written down, it had to be very important, because books were very expensive. So now let's go over to the questions. Three things people did for fun during the medieval period. How did medieval music begin? Maybe where or what kind of music it was? I'd like for you to define plain song for me. And then list some of our medieval string instruments. You can use some of the ones that we did in the video or the, some of the ones that are on there. Um, what kind of instrument was the coronet? What is the theory about how the hurdy-gurdy got its name? And then I want you to use your own words and tell me why music, histories, music historians don't know exactly how medieval music sounded. Alright, and next up is the Baroque period.